This researcher is studying nanoparticles, those tiny materials that are just a fraction of the thickness of human hair. But these nanoparticles aren't going to be part of a solar cell or a sensor device. They might one day be used by doctors to fight cancer. Here at the Nanotechnology Characterization Lab in Frederick, Maryland, researchers work with companies and university groups to test nanomedicines and help move them into clinical trials. NCL, which is part of the National Cancer Institute, hopes to accelerate the pace at which nanotherapeutics make it to cancer patients. Nanomedicines are important just because they allow us to do a lot of different things. A lot of these chemotherapeutics are not very water soluble. Um, so nanomaterials allows us to encapsulate them in something that is and that we can inject in the body um, so we can deliver more drug uh, efficiently. To help get these materials successfully to the clinic each year, NCL accepts about 12 nanomedicines from groups around the country for evaluation. So once a project is accepted to NCL, then the collaborators submit material to us. And we have usually six weeks to do preclinical preliminary assessment. These assessments are done in the chemistry and biology labs at NCL. When we get a new submission of nanomaterial, um, the first thing we do on the biology side is to st test for sterility. So we look at microbial sterility, which would be uh, if the material is contaminated with bacteria, mold, fungus, yeast. When the chemistry lab receives a nanomedicine, it first determines the size of the particles plus their coatings with a method called dynamic light scattering. So the size of the nanomedicine matters because if it's too large, then we can't inject it into humans or animals because it will cause adverse effects. If the nanomaterials pass muster in these pre-screen measurements, NCL will delve deeper. In the chemistry lab, this might mean checking whether a material is composed of as much metal or polymer as it's supposed to be. Taking a look at a material under an electron microscope might also be revealing. Sometimes we'll get um, nanoparticles that aren't exactly stable, so when we look at them in the microscope, we might see a different shape than we were um, expecting. In the biology lab, researchers will test the nanomedicines in liver and kidney cells from humans and animals. So the production of a lot of nanomaterials, the actual making of the nanomaterials, may have components to it that we know are cytotoxic. That's a problem because some of those reagents don't always get cleaned off the nanomedicines properly. If the nanomedicine hopefuls fail any of the chemistry or biology lab tests, they won't move on to experiments in animals. NCL will ask their collaborators to reformulate. Usually when we get a, in, a new nanomaterial sample, the first time, nobody gets it right. Uh, the second time and third time, uh, the, the material is pretty good. A targeted approach at NCL for targeted delivery of promising cancer medicines. This is Lauren Wolf reporting for Chemical and Engineering News.